batching, locally controlled, remotely delivered, the options seem overwhelming. But guess what? All you gotta do is know where to go and how to make them work for you. I'm gonna show you all the secrets and tell you the best way to patch your systems. All that and more, coming up now. Hello everybody, my name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV. Welcome back to our continuing conversations around Windows Server and how do I do those pesky things I always wanted to know how to do, but could never really figure out on my own. We take a complex topic, we make it simple for you, we explain the do's and don'ts, giving you the power to go off and make Windows work for you. Remember, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out this and all the other cool and exciting conversations we have across this series. If you need more in-depth training or want to know more about the technicalities of a certain topic, well, check us out over at itpro.tv where myself and all the other entertainers I work with are hanging out waiting for you. We can train you on Windows and ever so much more. All right, so in this episode, we're taking a look at patching two ways. We're going to be able to talk about how we patch manage locally. That's pretty simple, actually. The Windows update capabilities that we're all familiar with are what we'll focus on there. But we can also create a centralized patching solution using what's called the Windows Server Update Service, the WSUS capabilities. It's a role that we install and configure. We do that through Server Manager. We're going to quickly take you on a tour and show you how to do both, giving you maximum flexibility when it comes to patching that infrastructure. Join me here if you will. We're on our Windows Server 2022 virtual machine where we do most of our conversations and demonstrations from. I'm gonna start out in the start menu on the desktop here. and We're gonna go into settings to be able to look at the local Windows update capabilities. So join me here, we're gonna click start. We're gonna go down here to our settings icon. That's our little gear right down there. And we're gonna open up the settings area, essentially looking at the control panel. And we're gonna come over here to the update and security area where we can look at Windows Update and we'll see the update capabilities are on display for us. This is a pretty common view. I'm sure most, if not all of you, are familiar with this from your own systems, whether you're doing this at work or not. And a lot of times this is set to check automatically. The system itself will often just check one or more times a day for outstanding and pre-existing patches that Microsoft just teed up. Uh, if they are available and we need them, we'll download them. They'll be listed here uh, and staged, and they may even install automatically depending on the settings we choose. We may need to click that we want to install them. We may have to restart the system, so we just have to pay attention to some of those details. But majority of this can actually be automated depending on what we choose to do. We do have the capabilities here uh, below that area to pause updates for a period of time, change the active hours where we are working and don't want to have restarts getting in the way of what we're doing. We could see the past history of updates that have been successful or on occasion have failed. And we can add additional update controls and modify settings here to achieve those end results I was talking about, almost fully, if not fully automating this process as needed. But the most simple thing to do is simply check for updates and to see if there's anything out there pending that we may need. Now, this system was updated right before we shot this episode. So we're not probably gonna have any updates, but it's always good to check. Microsoft may have put something out in the last little bit, you never know. So it doesn't seem to be anything out there, but you'll see we're set here, it says, to automatically download and install updates except on meter connections, meaning where there may be charges. In that case, those updates will be downloaded, but only the ones that are necessary to keep Windows running smoothly, meaning securely. The rest will be left until you're connected where you're not going to be charged. Now, this is a pretty standard, common, and easily understood, uh, if you will, set of features associated with Windows Update. But... What I get asked a lot about is this red text up here. Most of us have been seeing this more and more. Some settings are managed by your organization. I get asked this by customers and students all the time. Hey, what's going on with that? Why are we doing that? My company doesn't have policies that are managing updates and or they're not aware that there are, but it's for one of two reasons. Either it's because your company is managing aspects of the Windows update experience using policies, typically group policies, and or it's because your machine is running a Windows Insider build. This is the one most people don't realize. And if you're running in part of the Windows Insider program, you see that because the Windows Insider build capabilities have to be monitored, maintained, and operated by Microsoft, the pushing of those new operating system loads every week come through Windows Update, and Microsoft reconfigures your system 
controlling aspects of the Windows update process to allow those operating system updates to be delivered and installed for you typically once a week. I do that on my physical laptop running Windows 11. I've done it for years throughout the Windows 10 release cycles as well. And so I see that on my machine all the time. And we see that if we're in the Windows Insider program. You can tell that by viewing policies there and you'll get an answer to that question and you'll see you have opted in for the Windows Insider program or there are policies managing updates and the policies that are set are listed here so you can actually see what they are. Notice they're set by group policy and notice we can tell what they are. All right, so we have debunked hopefully the concepts associated with the local use of Windows Update, but I do wanna show you what some of those advanced options are. Let's take a look here. And you'll notice under advanced options that I have the ability to receive updates for other Microsoft products when you update Windows. So not just Microsoft Windows itself, but Microsoft Office, for instance, can receive updates, download updates over metered connections where extra charges may apply. Notice these are turned on. If I wanna turn them off, I can toggle on and off very simply. I meant to say notice they're turned off, but notice I can turn them on just by toggling. And as I do that, I can easily then change the updates and the cycle of those updates. And this one, restart this device as soon as possible when a restart is required. When an update comes in and is installed, they can opt in for that as well. And then update notifications. I can get that little pop-up that says, hey, there's a notification. Uh, that tells me that a restart is pending. I can turn that on also. And I can pause updates temporarily, and I can specify a date that I wanna pause those updates until, saying, you know, I wanna pause them for let's say approximately about 30 days out, and I can do that. It's actually about uh, 35 days out approximately. And I can do that right from here. And I can also go in and look at delivery optimization and I can allow downloads from other PCs where I might be able to get that file because it's already available inside of my network without having to download it off of the actual internet or through the cloud where I might burn up a lot of bandwidth. So if I allow downloads from other PCs, I then have the option to specify whether that is on my local network or on my local network as well as PCs that might be connected to the internet. And to go even deeper, there are additional advanced settings that I can look at here that allow me to control and throttle the actual amount of bandwidth that is being devoted to this download activity between two machines in an emergency where maybe I don't have an internet connection, but I have a local network connection and I can move those files, but for whatever reason, I'm not able to put them on storage media and transfer them manually. I can download them over the network and I can throttle or control that amount of bandwidth if necessary. So we like the capabilities here, there's multiple advanced settings, both download and upload can be controlled and throttled as a percentage of bandwidth available and devoted to this activity, but they're buried several layers deep in multiple screens. I don't necessarily care for the fact they're not all together in one place. I think Microsoft could have done a slightly better job making them visible, but that's what we're here to do is to discuss them and show you how to find them, but they certainly are available and you just have to know where to look if you wanna play around with them. Viewing update history, always very important to take a look at the updates that have come in, whether the installation was successful or not. But I also like to point out to my students and customers in this area that we can uninstall updates and we can then specify recovery options from here. Again, something a lot of people don't realize is available. We can uninstall an update if necessary and we can specify recovery options. This is just a link to another area where we can go in and work with recovery options, uh, depending on what we're doing here. You'll see we can troubleshoot from here and do whatever else Microsoft may recommend or make available. And I can change the active hours for device uh, management. If I turn this on, current active hours are between eight and five, and I can go ahead and I can then modify, if I choose to, what active hours may be. Uh, further, essentially optimizing, right? the capabilities around delivering those updates. And if I wanna pause updates, but only for seven days, not for that calendar pick list that I showed you, I could do this quickly right from here. I could resume updates just by doing that. Very simple, if I want more than a seven day pause, I do that under advanced options as we were looking at. All right, so you've seen all the local features. Let's take a look at what we wanna do. We wanna scale this for the enterprise. We wanna set up 
a server that becomes a single source of truth, what we call the Windows Software Update Service, WSUS, it is commonly and affectionately referred to. We want to be able to use that to gather and download all these updates from Microsoft. So we're still going to go out and get all these updates from the internet. We're going to load them all onto this server. And then with this service and the management console it provides, we're going to then create a catalog of updates and allow ourselves to group the updates into essentially packages that we want to be able to make available and deploy. We can then assign those updates to individual systems or groups of systems in our organization, centrally managing and controlling that Windows update experience, but doing it all from behind our firewalls, securely on our local network, because the only server that's actually connected, only system, is actually exposed to the outside world directly will be the Bridgehead server, the WSUS server that downloads our updates. If you ever wondered how all that works, well, we're gonna show you how to install and configure the WSUS capability right now. We need to go to the server manager to do that. We're gonna go to our start menu, go to our server manager tile where we can open the server manager from, always pinned at the upper left-hand corner in our navigation area. We'll open the server manager, and once this sets up and just checks quickly the current status of the system, and it's available for us to begin working with, that little flashing blue line that's chasing across the screen tells us that we're doing an update. We're good to go here. We're gonna go over to Manage, and we're gonna have to install a role or feature to add the Windows Server Update Service WSUS capability. So we're gonna walk through that wizard. We'll click Add Roles and Features, and notice, we have this little before you begin screen. It just tells us what we're about to do. We're gonna skip through that. We're gonna do a role-based or feature-based install that is the default. If we wanna do a remote desktop services installation where we can add remote desktop capabilities to this server, serving up services for those people that need to consume them remotely and allow remote connectivity into the server, we can configure that separately. So we're gonna click and select the default. We're gonna select the machine we wanna target for the install, in this case, the local server that we are working with managing directly. But if we had multiple servers, some of which were remote, some are local, and we're managing, or one is local, or we're managing all of them, they'd be part of what we call a server pool. You could see the server pool designation right here. Just a fancy Microsoft term for a group of servers that we wanna manage. And we would make the appropriate selection here. Just pay attention to the name of the server you're selecting if there's more than one and target the appropriate one. Notice I could also select a virtual hard disk. I could work with a virtual hard disk and configure the WSUS or any server feature or role that I want to install, making it available and then using it in a separate deployment. But I would have to make some additional choices. I have some additional steps to follow as you can see here. And I have to provide a path to the virtual hard disk that I want to work with. So we have options. We'll stick with our server directly from the server pool. It is highlighted by default. We'll click next. We then have to choose, in this case, the role that we want to install. The list is alphabetized. It will be at the very bottom, below Windows Deployment Services, Windows Server Update Service, the WSUS service. We'll click there. Notice we have a bunch of dependencies that are required, rather long list, by the way, that are required for us to do the install. Some of these may be installed already on your system if you're using IIS and hosting a variety of websites. Others may not, so the list may vary for you as you do this. It'll be up to you based on your current configuration. .NET Framework is required. Remote Server Admin Tools are required. The configuration of the web server in a specific way is required. And Process Activation Service will also be required. I have to accept all these in order to do the install. The nice thing is, Microsoft's smart enough to tell us what we need, make those selections. I don't have to select the 30 or 40 individual elements, making sure I got them all right. I can simply just go ahead and allow this selection to be made on my behalf. So we like this a lot. We'll click Add Features. That has now been configured on the Features list. But notice, I now have a WSUS area that I have to configure some settings in as part of this. We'll continue our walkthrough. All those features are now going to be enabled. The .NET Framework version 4.8 is selected. We see the remote server admin tools are selected and that capability there under the role admin tools for Windows Server Update Services tools has been selected right there. And we'll see that we have some additional stuff that is required like the process activation service. All of that's been selected for us. Don't have to worry about any of it. We then have the Windows Server Update Service Overview. It says, hey, you're about to do this, things that you wanna make sure that you should note. 
says that at least one of your WSUS servers has to be available and connected to the internet to download from Microsoft Update, as I suggested would be the case. Any other WSUS servers can then download from that original machine, the bridgehead servers, I called it, that creates that connection out to the outside world. And the WSUS server to server and server to client communications should be set up to use SSL, which means they should use a secure encrypted protocol connection that will protect that traffic. Okay, I'm game for all that. Let's click next. We have to specify our role services specific to the WSUS configuration, select which role or roles we want to install. The Windows ID connectivity, the Windows internal database is what we're setting up to manage those updates. The WSUS services itself, uh, the internal database is going to be the option we choose if we're not gonna have a separate SQL server, an external database that we would connect to. If we do, we need the SQL server connectivity option, and we'd have to then specify the name of the SQL server. This really is dependent on the nature of the systems you're running. You might have to work with the database administrator or the DB group in your organization to figure out the best way to do this. But the default is to use the internal database. It's Think of it as like SQLite. We don't have to have a separate big SQL database running. We install a local version that is licensed and available as part of the WSUS install, and we manage it all in the same machine. So we're gonna do that. Click Next. Then we have to specify where we want the content to be stored. You'll see here, store updates in the following location, choose a valid path uh, on the machine or a remote path. It says if you choose to store updates locally, updates are not downloaded until the WSUS server approves them. And we obviously can go ahead and save disk space by clearing the checkbox here. Uh, and we will then not store them locally. We will simply download them as needed. So it's up to us to configure. I'm not gonna configure and store them locally right now. We're just gonna uncheck that. And just for purposes of a quick install, show you that option. You can decide on what path you wanna put them in yourself. We'll click next. We're then gonna get this configuration going. Remember, we can restart automatically if we choose to, but it will cut us off. The server will automatically restart when we're done, if necessary, without any warnings. So you just wanna note that as part of this configuration. You can see that right there. You have to opt in if you wanna do that. I'll say yes. I'm gonna go ahead and let that install kick off. Now the install itself can take a, a while to run, so be prepared for that. Once the install is finished, we actually then get access to the WSUS management capabilities. There's a whole separate set of steps that will go on with actually configuring WSUS beyond the conversation we're having in this initial episode. But suffice it to say that you certainly can go through and walk through all the WSUS configuration setting up fully this ability. And if you're not familiar with how to do it, you can check out Microsoft's own documentation. It's really straightforward. You can certainly come back, check out our YouTube channel where we may have another episode about how to do that. And or you can always check us out, as I said, over at itpro.tv directly, where we go in depth and show you how to walk through complex solutions like configuring and setting up WSUS end to end. And we can show you how to do everything you need to do to get it up and running fully. All right, that's gonna finish cooking. We're not gonna wait around for it to finish. It'll be done, it takes about five minutes or so. And when that's finished, you can then restart the machine if necessary. Uh, and you can then open up the WSUS management portal and you can begin managing and configuring your WSUS server. I'm gonna go get ready for more exciting and cool demonstrations for you as we continue our conversations on our YouTube channel about everything you need to know about how to optimize and manage your Windows Server experience. But until you come back for another fun, exciting conversation, I'm gonna wish you happy servering, and I'll see you soon.